It's 1996 and Nikon released the pinnacle of a film camera of that year, Nikon F5. The Nikon F5 actually began its development several years before its release. They started drawing out the designs for it as early as 1992, four years after the Nikon F4, its predecessor, was announced. Now, the F5 is considered by many the ultimate film camera, partially because of the technology that is built into this body. We're going to give you a brief summary of all the techie specs to decide whether or not it's worth picking one of these up in the year 2020 something, depending on when you're watching this video. Let's start with the big one, the autofocus system. This camera has possibly the most advanced autofocus system in any film camera ever. It is actually considered to be one of the fastest bodies and was designed specifically for professionals, whereas earlier Nikon F single digit flagship cameras were usually designed for both professionals and consumers. This was a camera where Nikon said, you know what, we're going to concentrate on the pros and that's what we got as a result. In fact, instead of having one or two or three focusing points, it's got five. Imagine that. Now, that might not seem like a lot in comparison to digital era, but in 1996, that was kind of a big deal. Now, they also put in one of the most sophisticated metering systems. This is actually a 3D color matrix metering system. Again, if you look at digital terms, we now have metering systems that can measure color temperature as well as various different types of lighting. At the time of the F5, this meant that the metering system was sophisticated enough to deal with both different temperatures of light and meter correctly based off of that. Let's talk about French per second. It's got eight frames per second. That means that you can go through 36 frames of a roll of film in about four and a half seconds. That is up from 5.7 that was previously at a four. Yes, now the shutter is actually also tested up to 150,000 actuations. This is when we started to get that bench tested shutter actuation figure. 150,000 shutter actuations is about actually over 4,100 rolls of 36 frames. Wow. That is a lot, of film. a lot of film. You've also got standard features like a shutter speed of up to eight thousandth of a second, a flash sync speed of three hundredth of a second, and support of all of Nikon's lenses up to the AFS G type. So you've got AI, AIS, AF, AFD, AFS, AFI, G, but not the latest E and AFP. That's right. Now, it did also have VR support, which was a new addition to this camera. So if you have an AFS G-type lens with vibration reduction built into it, the F5 will be able to make use of that. Now, let's talk about this beautiful design that led to a design ethos to a lot of Nikon digital DSLRs. Mm -hmm. It was designed by a famous designer, Giorgetta Gigiara. And in this case, it's got this little gray accent and there on a regular five it would be in burgundy red that's right now this particular example that we've got in our hands here is actually the 50th anniversary model it was the one that nikon brought out in 1998 to celebrate the fact that they had been producing film cameras for 50 years it features a very special as they called it dark gray i call it gunmetal gray top you've also got the lettering nikon lettering on the front being the same as that that was inscribed on the Nikon 1, the first Nikon 35mm camera. And it's got the special Nippon Kagaku logo inscribed on the back with the 50th anniversary sign there. It came with a special wide strap and was about 15,000 more yen than the original price of 325,000 yen. Not many were made, only 2,000 units. That's right. Let's talk about the accessories now. Yeah, so first up, you could change the head. So you could, instead of having a standard finder, have an action finder, a waist level finder, a six times high magnification finder, and multiple options of focusing screens, which were dedicated for the F5. Couldn't be used in any other camera because you needed to have a little sort of electronic chip on the side of the focusing screen in order to work and be compatible with the autofocus system. 
F5 was the last camera with interchangeable prisms. The successor F6 didn't have that. That's right. Now, the batteries are one thing that makes this camera very, very hefty. It has a slot for eight AA batteries in here. You could use rechargeable AA batteries if you wanted to. Uh, they also produced a rechargeable power pack called an MN30 and the Charger MH30. But unfortunately, due to their age, they're no longer very useful and don't hold their charge for very long unless you get them reselled. If you are looking to buy one this day, don't get MN30 batteries with it, but just to have a hold of a standard AA. Exactly. Now, if you do pick up an MN30 at a bargain price, it, you can get them refurbished by selected places. But those places that will resell those batteries are honestly becoming few and far between. So standard AA's, throw in some rechargeable AA's to be environmentally friendly, are honestly the best bet for you. So let's talk about the backs that you can add to those cameras. So you had an option of MF27, which is standard data back. So that would replace the one that comes standard with the camera. Um, you can also add a multifunction MF28 back, which among other features would add a multi-interval shooting to the camera. It's not a very light camera. At 1.2 kilograms, you definitely feel the weight, but that's actually without the battery. Once you have the batteries in, you're looking at about one and a half kilo just for the body without the lens. Yes, and it is an all metal construction. So it is weather sealed to a certain degree. So the camera was designed not just to be held in hand and sat on the shelf for a long time, but actually to be used from weddings to construction sites to be thrown anywhere and withstand a lot of impact. In terms of flash compatibility, it is compatible with all of Nikon's creative lighting system flashes with TTL. As long as you've got some kind of commander on the body, you'll be able to fire other compatible flashes. But if you're looking to add flashes, they were around at the same time. You can start with SB26, 27, 28, even SB30, but also a later ones like SB600 and SB800. Two, three. I don't know. <laughs> I was like, I didn't know I got those moves, you know? <laughs> now let's show you how to load it. All right, let's load the Nikon F5. So first of all, near rewind the lever, you have a little slider that you just need to push in and leave the rewind lever. So that way it opens the camera. So now we can see the back of the camera. Thank you, Tilly. And all you have to do is just put your film in like that. Push the rewind the living back so it engages with the cassette. And all you have to do is just put your film in here. So the important bit is once you put the film in there, so all it needs to do is the sprockets holes, sprocket holes on the film to engage with the cocks on the camera. So I'm just gonna close it in and press the shot release button. The camera automatically rewinds the film and sets it to the frame one. You're ready to shoot. To rewind the film back, there are two things you need to do. So first of all, there's a little button over here, which is covered by the tiny door. That's on the left-hand side for me right now. So, but it's actually on the right when you look at the camera. And also the button on the left-hand side, which has number two on it. And when you press those two, push the lever up and the camera will automatically rewind the film back. So now if we take the film, if you open the door and look it up, the film is fully rewind back into the cassette. Nikon F5 was a true product of its time and it's still loved by many. So if you're thought of getting one, do have a look at Grace Always Mr. website. We do have some of those in stock in different conditions from very expensive to very, very affordable. Absolutely. They also all come with a 12 month warranty, which uh, gives you that extra peace of mind. Thank you very much for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. Please give us a like and a subscribe. Head over to our website to see what we have in terms of film cameras. And if you've got one already or haven't got one, tell us what you think about the camera. Is that the Ultimate F5 or F6 is still a king? This is how you load it. Whatever you said before. This before is how that. you load it. <laughs> <laughs> Say. And it was and it was designed by famous designer. It was designed by famous designer, the designer, Giorgetta Giorgica. <laughs> uh, 